Today, we're looking at Diamine's Peach Haze. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Diamine's Peach Haze is a kind of orangey peach color. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a D-like alpha with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. Now before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. Now ignoring, ignoring the red splotches that appeared up there that I do not know where they came from. I think it touched another pen that was out, that was putting for writing samples and then it was just near it. And ignore those dots. The one on the left, we see that there's a pink that pushes up. We see a kind of peachy color, but then a lot of yellow across the top. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water, and we see that pink still there that pushes way up. Spots, just a few spots of that kind of peachy tone, and then that same amount of yellow across the top. It really leads me to feel that there's going to be no real resistance here. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. Now I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles it incredibly well, especially given that chromatography. It didn't blow out. That extra fine is still about an extra fine. Very safe for the note-taking situation. A surprise based on a chromatography is the water test. The water lifted all of the tones except that pink. The pink is still there. The pink seems to be holding on after three days. Now, pen flush did a whole lot more than water. We see it really starting to go away. We see some of the white of the paper coming through. We easily see the dots of the Rhodia dot pad, making me feel that pen flush is all that I would need to get this out of my pen. Bleach, as is normal, completely removed it from the paper, but there should be no reason for a one-third bleach solution to get this out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Dimine's Peach Haze has a viscosity of 2.32, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Dimine's Peach Haze has an average dry time of 14 seconds, making it normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. <coughs> I picked this ink up in sample form, and I have no idea where the end of the sample went. I think I used it completely up because I was in such shock by this ink. Yeah, shock. So to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Hmm. Let's take a look at Claire Fontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It is very nice stuff to look at. The extra fine is a slightly lighter tone with no feather spread. Halo sheen, no shade. I am just amazed at what a nice color this gives me and that I can read it. I remember seeing it in the sample vial and really being afraid of how horrible it was to work with. And then it was this, beautiful. The extra fine was nine seconds to dry. Medium, slightly darker tone than we get with the extra fine. It's about the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for the extra fine and the medium both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test, you could probably recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Look at that. Beautiful color. Beautiful. Not a color I would have otherwise thought, hey, let me go check out a peach ink, but this is nice. Tomoy River, no bleeding. Yes, we have some ghosting. 
not horrible because it's a very light color. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen or shade. The extra fine is a slightly lighter tone with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, 16 seconds to dry. Medium, slightly darker tone. Back to what we saw with the 1.1, no feather spread, halo sheen or shade. 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And a smear test, yeah, you know, you, you can't recover that. It's okay. Rhodia. No bleeding. No ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread. Halo sheen. No shade. The extra fine is a lighter tone with no feather spread halo sheen or shade 11 seconds to dry the medium goes back to the tone we see with the 1.1 it has no feather spread halo sheen or shade 14 seconds to dry the scrubby for both show us no color variation we didn't expect it we didn't get it in a smear test you could probably recover this if you smeared while you were writing so instead of looking at the yellow rhodia let's look at the g lalo because here was a paper that's not done very well for finding inks that look nice on it, and it actually it looks rather pleasant. It greatly alters the tone of this ink. So the G. Lalo, it's a laid paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Look at those tone differences. Very nice. Ah. Very nice. Four seconds to dry. The medium is a darker tone back to what we see with the 1.1 with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, seven seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't get any. And the smear test, I don't think you could recover it. So Limon paper, and I was so hoping for Limon paper, and it fell short. You know, I was thinking a nice light ink like this, this would do rather well, but there's a ton of spots coming through. But it's not all the way through the paper and it doesn't stop you from using the back of the page. It does not touch the page underneath. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine, the extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, four seconds to dry. The medium, same tone as the 1.1, no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry. And the scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test, you could probably recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Black and red notebook, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It took six seconds to dry. The medium is a darker tone, the same dark tone that we see with the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It took nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could likely recover this. If you used an extra fine, not the medium, if you smeared while you were writing, and that is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Dimine's Peach Haze, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. And being a very kind of happy-go-lucky, brighter color, I wanted something darker and richer. I chose Private Reserve's Chocolate because it's a very nice brown. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Dimine's Peach Haze? I think it shades nicely when you can read it. Largely, it's too light an ink for me to have a whole page of writing and read comfortably. However, I do think this is a great alternative to using red inks to edit in your notes or to add important bits in that is going to draw a little bit of attention given your normal writing is in a very contrasting color. Thanks for watching.